waiting for the PDF to open. Have you heard this word before, thermodynamics? No? Mishery! No, no, I didn't have it. <laughs> what does the word thermo sound like? Heat. Heat and... There's another word closer. Thermo is a prefix. Prefix for what? Yeah, heat or temperature. Yeah? So, if we look at the word thermodynamics, thermo means heat, and what does dynamics mean? Mm -hmm. Yep, change. So, what do you think thermodynamics is about? Changing. Yeah, how heat changes, or how heat behaves. Thermodynamics, please, you can write this down. Right, you got that? Right, so thermodynamics is the branch of physics that studies the movement of heat between different objects. So in mechanics, we learned the movement of objects in space. Uh, in in uh, Newton's second law, we move, learns about how force affects movement. Uh, thermodynamics is learning about how heat moves, because of course heat moves. You feel it when you sit beside a heater, you know. So we need to study how it behaves. Thermodynamics also studies the change in pressure and volume of objects, which we started doing recently. And statistics is often used in thermodynamics to look at motion of particles. Thermodynamics is useful because it helps us to understand how the world of the very small connects to the world of the very large. So, of course, you don't need all of this for the exam. Uh, at the very least, you need the first sentence. Yeah? Continue? Okay. We have seen that kinetic energy of an ideal gas, you find it using this formula, PV equals 3 over 2E. Uh, but we've also seen that PV equals NKT, or NRT. So, if we put these together, we get 3 over 2E equals NKT. Make sense? Yep. So, we could uh, divide and we would get T equals 3 over 2K E over N. Yeah? Makes sense also? Uh, what was E, do you remember? Yeah, total kinetic energy. And N, the number of atoms, or number of molecules, I should say. So, what do you think E over N represents? The total kinetic energy divided by the number of molecules. Think about it in maths. The total of something divided by how much of it you have. Yeah, what's the word? What? No, 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 no. You have the right idea. Give me the right word. Average. The total divided by how many items you have is the average per item. So, the E over N 
It's like um, an average energy per molecule, which we usually call Ke, average, or sometimes just Ke with brackets, but average kinetic energy. Um, so now we have this formula. Um, average kinetic energy equals 2K over 3T, um, or you could put it the other way around. You could say uh, T equals 3 over 2K, average kinetic energy. I don't really care about this constant. I just want you to see that you have this very, very, very important result. I wasn't joking when I said this is very important. Um, it gives us the reason why Kelvin scale is so important. Because if you think about it, if T is zero, what are you saying about the average kinetic energy? If T is zero, then the average kinetic energy is zero. And what's the formula for kinetic energy? Half mv squared. The m is definitely not zero, so what's zero in the formula? The speed. So, at absolute zero Kelvin, none of the particles are moving. They all must be stationary. Uh, and this is why it's the minimum temperature, because we, we can't go any lower than zero speed. So, this gives us the reason why Kelvin is also an important unit. Temperature is really just kinetic energy except with a change in the units. So apart from this constant that changes the units, there's not much difference between average kinetic energy and temperature. No temperature means no kinetic energy, uh, which means no movement. This is the this is a key result here from this slide. So of course you don't need all of this, but the idea here is very, very important in thermodynamics. Did this ever come up in chemistry when you were talking about Kelvin or absolute zero or anything like that? No. Continue. Yes. Mayor? Oh, no, it's okay. Yep. Right. Some definitions. Musha Reef, what are you doing on your phone? Ready? Yeah. Internal energy, U, of a material, doesn't matter if it's solid, liquid, or gas, or plasma, um, it's the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of each molecule in the material. In other words, mathematically speaking, it's the total, um, well, I'm trying to get to the formula there. Uh, it's the total <coughs> energy, which is the total kinetic plus the total potential. Wait, wait, just before I write that down. So just to explain here, internal energy of a gas, it's the total kinetic energy plus the total potential energy of each individual molecule, all added up. But remember... Um, No, I won't say too much. Um, I'll just say it's the total kinetic plus total potential. That's the total energy. And this is kind of like what we mean when we say the heat energy of a gas. So if a gas is hot, it means its temperature is high, which means the kinetic energy is high as well. So kind of like saying heat. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you don't quite get that yet. It's enough for you just to write down internal energy is total energy of each molecule added up, which is all the kinetics plus all the potentials. But usually, if we're talking about an ideal gas, the potential is, we don't consider the potential, we only look at the kinetics. 
uh, which means that the temperature and the kinetic energy and the internal energy is all kind of the same thing. Okay. But, um, question. Yeah. Um, when, when it has kinetic energy, it doesn't have kinetic energy, right? No, it can have both. It can have both. Usually we don't really consider the gas as having potential energy. Because the reason is, if I fill this room up with, okay, so if I hold this pen here, it has potential energy, because when I drop it, that potential energy becomes kinetic energy. But if I fill this room up with a gas, the gas doesn't suddenly fall to the ground. So we don't really imagine it having a potential energy. So it's usually just the kinetic energy is added up, practically. You get that? You look confused. I can see it in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you? No. Are you sure? All I think about is the dimension is important. Okay, write down what you want to write down. You don't need that. The formula is most important here. Oh, that's a big mistake. That's the last thing you want to do in this class. Okay. Oh, Musharif. Right. Heat is a form of energy. It's not something physical. It's a type of energy. Heat has no mass. Heat can move from one place to another in different ways. In thermodynamics, heat means energy which is moved between two things when one of them is hotter than the other. Heat is not the same thing as temperature. So it's easy to mix up heat and temperature, but they're not the same thing. Okay? Remember, temperature is like an average kinetic energy per molecule. Whereas heat is like a total energy of the system that can be moved from one material to another material. So, if there was a heater here, that heat could move from here to my hand. Uh, that's not the same thing as saying the temperature moves from there to here, because temperature isn't an energy. Temperature is just an average kinetic energy per molecule. The molecules aren't moving. Uh, what has happened is heat energy has moved. Temperature decreases temperature increases. So, just think about it like this. Heat is an energy we measure it in joules. Temperature is not an energy, it's measured in Kelvin. They're not the same thing, okay? Um, the temperature is the average speed of the moving particles. So, here's a good example to understand the difference. A swimming pool at 20 Celsius has more heat energy than a cup of coffee at 80 Celsius. Now you might think about that. Even though the swimming pool is at a lower temperature, because there's more swimming pool than coffee cup, in total, the energy in total is greater for the swimming pool than the coffee cup. However, the cup of coffee is hotter than the swimming pool. So it's really unfortunate use of English. When I say something is hotter, it means higher temperature, not more heat energy. Unfortunate use of English here. So heat, to summarize, you can transfer it from one body to another, you can measure it, and it's not material. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have a mass. And finally, heat is a form of energy, so you, know, you measure it in joules. Um, 
Can you see that okay? My, just a little bit. The exam could ask you something like give two properties of heat, three properties of heat, something like this. Got these bullet points? Yeah. Yep. Continue. Yeah. The heat supplied Q is the energy pumped into the system. So I'll give you an example by what I mean by that. Uh, I'm making a cup of coffee. So you know I have to put it on something hot until the coffee boils, the water boils. So the Q is the energy I put into the system from the outside. This is called the heat supplied or the Q usually. Um, and I use pumped because, um, I don't know, it's just, um, this is always what I picture my lecturers using this word. Usually we use the word pumped for water. But at least my lecturers always use the word pumped as well in this situation to me and put an energy in, pump energy in. But I know, of course, energy is not a water. But we're using the same word here. We're trying to make it clear that we're putting it into the system. Um, for example, the train, however, oh I'll let you get the definition first. Yeah? Yeah. Okie dokie. Continue? Yeah. yeah. For example, a train engine works because it gets heat energy from the burning of the coal. The heat energy is converted into work. So, uh, maybe my coffee cup was an easier example. Right, another definition. Two physical systems are in thermal equilibrium so before I give you the rest of this, if you look at the word thermal and equilibrium, you might have a guess of what this means, to say two things are in thermal equilibrium. Same energy. Oh, you're so close. Okay. Same temperature, very good. Uh, so, if no heat flows between them when they're connected by a path, basically the same temperature, although it's more technical than that. So, if my left hand and my right hand are at the same temperature.
when I put my hands together, no heat moves between them. However, if the table is cold and my hand is warm, what will happen? The heat will move from my hand to the table, so they're not in thermal equilibrium. So basically the same temperature, but the technical definition is that. Um, what does permeable mean? Allowing. Allowing. Allowing movement. It's like that word in English, permit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right, um, so here's a very simple little train engine here. So you burn the coal, the coal makes heat, the water gets hot, it becomes steam, the steam pushes the piston, the wheel goes around and the train moves. Q, the heat energy pumped into the engine from the coal. So there's Q being pumped into the engine. Delta U is the change in internal energy. So the water gets hot. So this means its U increases. Because remember, if it gets hotter, then the kinetic energy increases, so it moves more. So the delta U gets bigger. As the U gets bigger, delta U is how much bigger it gets. And W is the work done. So if you think about Q goes into the engine, and what happens to the engine? It gets hotter, and the train moves. You can put these three together to form a formula from conservation of energy. So, what do you think the conservation of energy will tell us here about the relationship between Q, delta U, and W? Which is equal to which? What? You are wrong. Not this. What is a formula we can make with Q? What's huh? What's a formula? <laughs> no, because he might say it. No. Uh, what formula can you make with Q, delta U, and W using conservation of energy? Q equals delta U by W. Say again, Q equals? Yes. So, <laughs> the Q goes in, if you, if you um, look at it as a picture like this, here's the engine, so you put heat into the engine, so you make Q joules of heat when you burn the coal. And then what happens is the engine will get hotter. So there's a delta U joules of heat increase here. But the increase is not as much as this because some of the energy went into making steam, which went into making work, which went into making the train move. So in other words, this is like the before and this is like the after in the conservation of energy. So it's Q equals delta U plus W is the formula here. He said Q plus delta U equals W. 
same thing as what I said. Uh, anyway, uh, do we get the idea here? This, um, it's worth writing down, this result here. Okay. Continue. Okay. In the last diagram, heat energy was put into the energy and no, let's just say engine. Uh, heat energy was put into the engine, and the result was an increase in internal energy and work done. So you burnt the coal to make Q, and this Q became a delta U and a W. However, it is possible to do work and see an increase in heat energy. Shown below is a way to do this conversion of work into heat. Uh, this was uh, designed by Joule, who gave us the unit joules. So it's a very simple machine. Uh, maybe it's about 150 years ago. Oops. So he hangs a weight, okay, and he has a uh, meter stick here. So this has what type of energy right now? Potential, okay. This slowly falls um, because there's a there's a spindle here, and there's a rope, a string around the spindle. So as this falls and the string pulls, this starts to spin around. This is connected to paddles. Uh, paddles are just uh, squares. Like in the bicycle. Yeah, like in the bicycle, yes. Yeah. And this is placed into some water with a thermometer. So he calculated that the potential energy here and the energy here, which we don't know how to calculate yet, but he was able to show that the extra energy that you got here was equal to the potential energy of this. In other words, he showed how to change work into heat, whereas in the last example we changed heat into work. So if you do this and if you release it, you'll see that the water will start to warm up. I don't know. When I did this last year, the, some of the students wouldn't believe this. Um, but you can change the potential energy into heat energy. This, when the paddle spins around, it's putting kinetic energy into the water, which is raising the heat energy, which will cause the temperature to go up. Um, yes. Then it will be hotter. I knew that. I knew there had to be one student that didn't believe me. Because mm -hmm. there usually is a... No, it is hot water. Bring the hot water and move it. Outside down, it will be hot. No, it will become hotter. No. As long as... As long as this is well insulated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is the thing. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So... Um, uh, yeah, this is what I'm ready to say here. I just wanted to show you that you can go from heat to work and work to heat. You can convert between the two. Right, now time for some laws. By the way, this is the reason why the water at the bottom of a waterfall is warmer than at the top of the waterfall. Because at the top of the waterfall, what energy does the water have? potential. At the bottom it doesn't have this potential. This potential became kinetic and the kinetic became heat. So 
So the, bo the water at the bottom of a waterfall is warmer than at the top. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Law of thermodynamics. So we've had all these slides, all this preparation. Now we can actually talk about laws of thermodynamics. Is that Hisham? Do you need to answer it? Yeah, yeah you better. Yeah. Maybe someone hacked his account. Yeah, true, yeah. Is your hair Yes, they said I can go and meet them on Monday to do my application. And how about if you arrange you meet you or you No, 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 no. Once they arrange a meet and you will meet. It's yeah. Because you're going to go there and you're going to sit there. So what are they going to say? Sorry, I cancelled the meeting. In Monday, so no class in Monday. No, don't worry. I arranged it for 3.30, so you're okay. Why? Because I didn't want you to miss your class. She said, could you do it sooner? I said, no, no. Musharif, he must have this class. He'll be too sad if I cancel. He's like, okay, we'll do 3.30. I said, great. Just one day. <laughs> Sorry, Musharif. Not this time. Maybe if I have to go uh, next time, um, uh, we could do this, but not this Monday. Okay, so law of thermodynamics. The first law, or really the zeroth law, states if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third, then they're in equilibrium with each other. Let me explain that. If A has the same temperature as B, and B has the same temperature as C, then A and C are also at the same temperature. This seems obvious. It's why it doesn't have a number. It's why we call it zero instead of one. It's an obvious law. So you need to write it down like this. Like this. And the zero not the zero, uh, more likely the first and the second, but they could, they could. but they haven't. Uh, but you could be the unlucky one. Or the lucky Yes. So who hacked your bank account? No, my no? dad asked me more money. They wanted, uh, they yeah. had, had a problem with your account, was it too much money in it? No. 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 What's wrong? Change your address? Yeah, I yeah. did my business in the year 2005. Okay. Are you still going to work even though you're sick? Mm, no. No? I went last week to work. They called me on yesterday, they called me at night, but I didn't go. You should tell me to go. Yeah, I'll tell you. What? You'll fill in for him? How much is that? Huh? Ten euros? Ten. It's ten per hour, isn't it? Yeah. No, but you know what I'm saying? If I'm not driving the ship, then they are asking to come here and spend 20. Ten twenty? Yeah. They only give you an extra 20 cents? That's kind of mean. But ten is actually a good... Because ten is more than minimum wage. Minimum wage is like eight fifty or something. No, nine twenty. Is it nine twenty? Okay. Did you uh, work in when you were a student? Yeah, uh, when I was in high school for a summer I worked in McDonald's. That was my not first. Doing the, huh? Not doing the... When I was in college I did some teaching. Teaching? Yeah, some teaching. And teaching? Yeah. Yeah, okay. not much, like maybe... I don't know, well, maximum five okay. hours per week. Uh, something, well one year was maths and then another year was something called applied maths which is like mechanics, mechanics, yeah. all were Irish students, so high school students, yeah. and also in some university students for like tutorials, you know like uh, support 
process, you know. Is it easy to have an idea of time? Ah, yeah, it's okay. It's, um, if you only have five hours per week, it's okay. You know? It's if you have more hours, then it becomes difficult. Okay. The first law of thermodynamics is um, like conservation of energy, something we've seen earlier. That is delta U equals Q minus W. Now, that's the same thing as what we said yeah, earlier, it's just we put the W um, over on this side. Usually it's stated in this form, delta U equals Q minus W. So, in the slide, can I say that you believe this? Yes, yes, you can. Hmm? No, I think, why, why can't you believe this? Well, if you do say that, you have to at least say what each letter represents. Yeah, yeah. You can't just say delta Q equals Q minus W. You also have to say what the Q, the W, and the delta U is. Because you can write anything, A equals B plus C, there you go. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. But if you said, if you said, uh, if you said A equals B minus C, A is internal energy, B is energy supplied, and C is work, then it's right. <laughs> yes? Continue? Okay. The second law states that heat cannot flow from cold to hot. Of course it can flow from cold to hot if you do some work to make it flow this way. But spontaneously, that means naturally, no. So for example, this cup is hot. The heat would move from the hot to the cold. Can you give examples of when heat moves from cold to hot? No, heat moving from cold to hot means uh, something that is... When you melt. Why right, right. <laughs> He just said that. I said no. So, think about what that would mean. Imagine this is hot and the table is cold. If I put this hot on this cold, the heat will move from the hot to the cold. We want something that's the opposite, where the heat would move from something which is colder to something which is hotter. It's the opposite. So something which is cold gets colder, and something which is hot is fridge. That's it. So if you put something in the fridge, let's say I put my, um, my cup of coffee in the fridge, uh, no, no, I want something not hot. I want something... Uh, oh, yeah, I, I put my... My phone is at room temperature. If I put my phone at room temperature, what would we say is room temperature? 20 Celsius. I put that in the fridge. Um, do I... This is... Oh, hang on, let me think. That's not what I want. No, I want something colder than that. Um, what could I put in the fridge? So, like, the fridge gives the cold, but it's the it's hot, yeah, so I'm trying to think of the right numbers to make this make sense. Uh, let me think. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, no, it's too... No, no, I got a better one. A better one. Much better one. Air conditioning. Air conditioning, okay? So, if you think about it, you're sitting here, you're at whatever... 25 Celsius. Uh, the room is at whatever, 25 Celsius. And the air conditioning is at a cold 5 Celsius, for example. What should happen is the energy from me and the room should go into the air conditioner and warm the air conditioner up. Instead, what happens is the air conditioner cools the room down. So instead of the heat moving from me to the air conditioner, uh, it's the opposite. The, the heat moves the other way. But it's not spontaneous. 
is not spontaneous. This is why it's allowed to be opposite. Um, so I'll try and draw this. I'm not explaining this well, I'm sorry. Here's the man. Let's say he's at 25 Celsius and let's say he sits on a chair and the chair is, I don't know, 20 Celsius. The heat from his body will go into the chair and then will make the chair warmer. This is what normally happens. Yeah. Uh, but let's say he's in some nice sports car and the sports car has air conditioning in the seat. I'm sure there's cars like this maybe in a hotter country. Um, so he sits on the seat now and he's at 25 Celsius and the seat is nice and cold at uh, 5 Celsius. So the heat mm, and let's say the car is at 25 Celsius. So what should happen is the heat should make the air conditioning warmer but it doesn't. This makes him cooler. It takes energy from him. It takes energy from the room and then pumps it out of the car. So it's like it takes the heat in the room and pulls it out of the room. This should not happen naturally. The heat should only go into the car from the sun, not out of the car. Why can the AC do this? Because the AC is doing work. It's moving the heat that's in the car out of the car. Normally what happens with heat, it moves into the car from the sun, not the other way around. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, these are the three laws. So heat cannot flow from cold to hot without performing some kind of a work on the system. Another example would be when um, you have um, cold air comes in from the north to somewhere hotter like Ireland. I know Ireland's not hot but it's hotter than the North Pole. So work is being done when the wind blows the air which is cold down to Ireland which is hot because it should flow the other way. So the wind is doing the work in this case. This probably means the wind doesn't blow as fast when it reaches Ireland because it has done work to get the coals down from the north to Ireland. You got this? Are you speaking English? I'm with Cherie. If I kick you out of class, I won't have anyone in the morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Don't make me do this. I'll be all alone. Although, he wasn't here at 9 o'clock this morning, if you're wondering. No. The bus, I know. I did something very funny. What? Eight minutes in the screen. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's not funny. That's normal. It means the bus got stuck in the traffic jam. Just today, I come by this bus every day, and okay. I come in the time. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. 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 It was a bit bit bad this morning. Okay. Continue. Yeah. So um. Very simple. Just two questions to do. And then no homework again. Let me just stop the video, but 